So we're trying to solve the age-old problem. We want better cows, and farmers have been breeding better cows for hundreds of years. Being impatient devils that we are, we want to speed that process up. Traditionally, what we've done is bought the best quality semen we possibly could from the company that we thought delivered the, the genetics that we require for our system of spring block calving. And then we, we concentrate on fertility and mating as many cows as possible to, to that bull semen. The risk project is quite different. We're going to concentrate on dam improvement. So that's on the cow. We reckon the gains are much, much bigger by improving the cows than simply by bringing in improved bull genetics. One of the things that we have identified is that we've got a big gap between the poorest performing cow and the best performing cow. So if we can um, replace the poorer performing cows with better performing heifers, then the benefits will be that we'll have a uniform herd that um, gets in calf, produces the same amount of milk. So the risk group are trying to rank the cows based on their phenotype production, which will link back into genetic testing of their offspring. And then from that, we can select elite cows to produce our replacements from, on which we will be using sex semen and potentially IVF to produce embryos to put in to surrogate dams. So what we are really trying to do is do a weighted ranking system of the cows for the most productive down to the least productive. So from that, we can identify the very best cows for our system and produce the replacements from them from a much smaller number of cows than what we're currently doing. The uh, RISC group brings all our thinking together into one place by providing us with a facilitator. It helps somebody pull all our conversations together, somebody to organise our diary, somebody to, to go out and do the work when we're busy farming to find the individuals or organisations that need to help us. And that's the key thing. It's keeping it focused. It allows for discussion and collaboration. Often the challenge with, with getting people to work together is to develop a common purpose so that everybody's really clear about what they want to achieve. And with this group, uh, that came at the very start. I think the challenge will be actually doing what they want to do as quick as they want to achieve it. The wider you can spread the net, you know, the, the, the more networks you can gain, uh, the more innovation you can gain, the more expertise you can bring, and uh, you just get there quicker and faster. So my bit in terms of quantitative genetics um, is to enable the group to identify those animals at the top end of their herd that they would want to breed from and to identify how many offspring we could expect to get from the top animals. The combination of that effort then tells us whether we can concentrate our effort in the top 10 cows or the top 20 cows or the top 50 cows. Um, once we know that, we can then work out a mechanism by which those top 50 cows, for example, would produce embryos that would go into all the other cows in the herd. And these three farmers have 3,000 cows, so um, they can put those embryos in the other cows. Uh, that will create a generation of calves that are all related to the top 20 or 50 cows. So then my role becomes one of producing a mating program that would keep that progress going over time, but would minimise inbreeding. They had decided to operate their breeding scheme as one nucleus containing about 3,000 cows from three separate farms. And now that's quite unusual. Farmers are fairly independent normally. Um, and any one of them would be big enough to run their own breeding program. It became clear that they were very committed to making very rapid genetic improvement and so were amenable to some of the tech new technologies that would enable them to do that. I'm not aware of other people doing such a thing um, and it's really quite interesting to see the speed with which new innovations are now being applied by very innovative farmers, and in this case some dairy farmers with large herds. Um, and that represents a very good example of the way that the national herd is likely to move in the future. Having people like Hamish and the geneticists on board just keeps everything on track, keeps us really focused and just makes sure it gets done on time. It's difficult to get away from the coalface sometimes and, and it's also very important for us to not lose sight of the, and the, the things day to day. So we need to 
concentrate on getting these cows to calve inside a short window and if you if you miss or mix that up it, it takes years to recover so we have to take responsibility for our own problems and seek the answers out not wait for somebody to bring them to us this type of project is what we need to become a thriving striving industry we hope to solve a whole lot of problems for for the industry as well as for ourselves if we can make it commercially viable then it can be copied i believe in collaboration and working with rory and graham and firing ideas off each other means that we're actually going to manage to progress this scheme much quicker than we would individually you know farms need to be able to make money to reinvest in the environment into their futures as well and i believe by improving the efficiency of the milk that we produce our businesses will be much more regenerative in their very nature.